very much. Morning, everybody. How you guys doing? There's not enough energy right now, so we're going to do a really quick exercise. I want everybody to stand up in their seats. Stand up. Come on. You can do it. Perfect. All right. Now you can sit down. I'm going to hope this button works. All right, there we go. So I don't have a lot of slides this morning. In fact, we're not big believers in PowerPoint at Facebook. Um, what I do want to do is um, share with you a few stories. And hopefully, our stories will inspire you to think differently uh, about data to realize the opportunity that we, fa we all face uh, in today's, uh, today's age. I want to start with a story of, of what happened to me when I first uh, came to Facebook. I started at Facebook about three and a half years ago. Um, and it was a huge uh, pride for me to have the opportunity to work at a, at a company like Facebook. I was really, really excited. But I came in and things were kind of a mess. We had a bunch of stuff. The company was growing uh, massively. We couldn't keep the basics in our IT environment going. Email wasn't working. And I had this meeting with Michael Saylor. And he comes in and my mindset was all about like fixing the problems of today. And all Michael could talk about was his vision for the future and how I should be thinking about not the operational aspects of IT, but the tremendous opportunity that the data that um, we all collect as IT organizations presents to CIOs, how we could help our sales organization, how we could change the conversations with our customers. And it was a dream. It was a big dream that to me at the time seemed impossible. But it was inspirational, and it was a big part of how uh, I began leading the IT organization uh, at Facebook as I started my career there. Um, at Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg talks a lot about the, uh, the emerging and knowledge economy, that we are moving away from the industrial age into this, into this new world. And in the, in the knowledge economy, the assets of the firm, the company, uh, are no longer the real estate or the manufacturing facilities that we have or even the intellectual property that the company owns. The asset of the knowledge enterprise is the creativity and the innovation of the workforce itself. And Facebook lives this. We have tremendous technology that we have developed over the years. It is staggering how much technology we've been able to develop to help facilitate one of the largest websites in the world. But we give most of that technology away. It's open sourced. Anybody can access it via opencompute.org. What matters more than anything at the company is our workforce and the culture that supports it. And one of the most important roles at Facebook is to ensure the productivity of that workforce. And that's my job. That is why I exist at the company, is to ensure that we make uh, our employees productive. And we do that by really living you know, to our, our name, uh, IT, information technology. Information is key. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But it's also about innovation, about finding new ways to do things differently, to help make the workforce more productive this year than they were last year. It's absolutely about the technology. And in our case, we have the benefit of not only working on technologies that we've built, like our recruiting systems, like many of our internal tools, but also in partnering with third parties to help them develop their technologies as well. And that's the next story that I, I want to share with you. Data, as I talked about, in, information is key. Data is the lifeblood of the knowledge enterprise. Data gives us insights about our business, about our products, about our customers, um, about users. Data gives us everything, and it is incredibly powerful. And at Facebook, we have a lot of data. Uh, our data at sca the scale of, of Facebook's data is, is quite staggering. And it's often difficult to really uh, appreciate. This is a picture of what Facebook looks like. And what this is, is a graph. There, every point of light in this picture is an individual and their uh, location. Every line is a relationship between them and somebody else. There is no geographic map here. The geography that we see is defined by people. And what you see is the interconnectedness of our planet, how we are becoming more and more uh, connected with each other. This is innately human. This is who we are. We are social beings. 
And what Facebook has become is a giant database of relationships. It's a, re a database of uh, relationships between people and their friends, between uh, likes and all the comments, between brands and their fan bases. And these relationships are very powerful, particularly if we can analyze them in ways to help improve the experience for um, users on Facebook and the effectiveness of our advertising platform. And in 2012, this was the problem um, that uh, we faced. How can we make Facebook more valuable to our advertisers? It was early on, it was before the company was public. We had, in IT, taken care of all the operational issues, and we were looking for ways to drive new, innovative mechanisms to help our sales organization drive conversations with our, with our customers. And I had looked at a uh, technology that MicroStrategy had made available on the web called Wisdom, which to me looked really, really cool. Uh, but for Wisdom to work for us, we would need to have it in-house. In we'd take the uh, security and the anonymization of our data very seriously, and so we, we had to run it in-house. So I, we, by that point, we had been a MicroStrategy customer for a couple years, and I ran into our sales rep, uh, Spencer Doyle, literally in the hallway. And I made what seemed to him initially like a flippant comment of, hey, Spencer, I was really, I was checking out Wisdom. That looks really, really cool. Do you think that we could actually bring that technology here and run it on top of our data? And Spencer looked at me and was trying to check out whether I was serious or not. Are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. If you're serious, I'll have engineers here Monday. Are you serious? I was serious. Lo and behold, next Monday, he shows up with a team of people, and we started working on some experiments. Could we run this technology directly on our data? And we had a bunch of problems that we had to solve. As I mentioned earlier, we have a massive amount of scale. There are over a billion people that use Facebook on a monthly basis, over 700 million that use it every single day. So we had to find ways to uh, scale this data into something that we could analyze in a uh, predictable period of time um, and to make it easy for our sales organization to uh, take advantage of. Um, and over the course of about six weeks, we were able to do some pretty impressive things. We brought the data together on um, a single node system. This is a two terabyte box. We were able to load eight billion rows into this system and provide an easy to use interface that changed the conversation that we had with our customers. It helped give life to our data. It helped help companies like uh, Coca-Cola and others understand who are their fans, what are they interested in, how can we better engage them, how can we better speak to them. But this was just the beginning. It pointed to all the things that we could do if we could scale this. And this is where Prime came from, the technology that uh, Michael Saylor talked about earlier. We started pushing MicroStrategy to solve a bunch of problems that at the time seemed kind of impossible. How do we scale this thing horizontally? How do we put more and more data in it? How do we make sure that we maintain the really impressive performance as we do so? And we push them to uh, develop a technology that we're, we've now uh, uh, rolled out and is just absolutely incredible. This is a giant in-memory system running across 3,500 cores 3,500 cores, 30 terabytes of raw memory that is addressed, over 220 nodes, 175 billion rows of data, and we can access this in seconds. The average query response time is less than three seconds on this system. It is an incredible feat, and it is one which was achieved through great partnership between Facebook and MicroStrategy. Now, as impressive as technology is, I want to reiterate one truth uh, about uh, today's world, which is the technology matters, but the workforce matters more. In fact, part of why I'm here is to get the message out that not only is data cool, not only is Facebook a big data company, but we're not just about a big consumer website. This is a company that is doing incredibly innovative things, just even internally, in terms of how we run our enterprise. And we are seeking the best in the, on the planet to come help us realize these things. But I also want to reach out to everybody and inspire upon you that 
the d opportunity for IT organizations with data is very, very real. And it doesn't, you don't have to be a Facebook and have our ability to develop technologies to take advantage of this. This is where companies like MicroStrategy come in. And one of the, some of the things that they have done are just so incredibly impressive. It's more about how you make use of the technology than anything else. But the other thing that you need in order to be successful in this is you can't just dream the impossible. You have to live the impossible. Thank you very much. <laughs>